Bible describe as Israel? Well, when you look in the Bible, there's a lot of um, a lot of discussion um, throughout Christendom and even in politics we see today of who is Israel and what role does the literal uh, nation of Israel plays today and politically as well as spiritual um, with the conflict that we see transpiring in, uh, in the Middle East with Islam um, in the Arab Spring and all these sort of things uh, um, Iran and their nuclear um, uh, uh, program that they have going and Israel feels threatened and you have different organizations here in the country of the United States um, politicking and moving, uh, seeking to urge the government on in their protect protecting Israel. And all of that stems from that many people in this country, as well as around the world, believes that there's an obligation that one has to protect Israel because they are deemed to be God's people. Uh, because of various prophecies and, and statements throughout well, the scriptures. But I think if we uh, examine what God purposed for Israel and where does the church, Protestantism, fit into that, then we could better understand what role the literal Israel, Israeli nation plays and prophecy and in events leading to uh, the coming of Christ. And I'm using a Christian language that most Christians can identify with. But in order to get that understanding, we must again look in the Bible. Now, I would like for us to look at a f our first scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where Paul is dealing with uh, the Israelites. And he mentions them in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and he shows us this um, uh, experience, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, with the children of Israel coming out of Egypt and, and God uh, working mightily through that particular nation for a reason, for a purpose. But Paul gives us this example, 1 Corinthians 10, and you could read all of it, but we're not going to do that for sake of time. <clears throat> I'll just highlight a few uh, passages to get the context. In verse 1, 1 Corinthians 10, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, speaking of the Red Sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So here Paul is showing us who he's speaking of, not just anyone, but uh, the children of Israel specifically as they were brought out of Egypt. And then jumping down to verse 6, he says, it says, Now these things were our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So now Paul is taking what happened to them literally and is now about to bring it into the church's experience in his day. But he goes a step further in verse 11. He says this, Now all these things happen unto them, Israel of old, unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So now what literally happened to the Israelites becomes an example for those who are living at the end of time, at the end of the world, in the last days. So Israel is an example for God's people in the last days. That's how Paul uh, sets the, the stage for us to understand Israel. Now, when we look back and we see in the beginning the, the nation of Israel, their birth of them coming as it were out of Egypt, but we have to go back before that. We have to go back before Abraham because this promise with Abraham and his son and the promises that came and through the literal line of Abraham but this promise goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden and as we look in the book of Genesis the book of beginnings Genesis chapter 3 we see in Genesis chapter 3 uh, the introduction of sin to the human race 
God shows us the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. But hope was given to the human race before they were put out of the Garden of Eden because of their transgression of God's law. God said in verse chapter 3 of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 15, Genesis 3 and verse 15, it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, <clears throat> so here we find that a promise was given to the woman, and when we look in Ephesians 5, verse 32, this woman symbolized or represents the church. Literal Eve, but symbolically she would represent the church. <clears throat> so God said that as they left the garden, that he would send a seed through the woman that would bruise the serpent's head. <clears throat> as the pair left the garden, Adam and Eve, as they left the garden, they had this hope that through them, through a seed, God would raise up a deliverer that would deliver them from the curse of sin, which was death. They looked for this speedy fulfillment in the birth of Cain. When they saw Cain, Eve says, I've gotten a man from the Lord. On, on the, the original it says, I've gotten a man, the Lord. She believed she immediately, that God immediately fulfilled the promise. <clears throat> But as time went on, uh, we see that history shows us that Cain came more to represent Satan than God. Abel represented God more than Cain. So we find that Cain uh, was looked at as being this um, savior, this, this, this man-child that would come. But we find that he wasn't. He was not the man-child that was to come and bring deliverance. He, he went on to be the first murderer. But let's look what Paul says about this in 1 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Timothy, and let's look in chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to look in, uh, I believe it's verse 14. But 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, we have this uh, explanation that is given to us Paul concerning uh, what actually happened in the Garden of Eden and we're in 1st Timothy chapter 2 and we're actually beginning in verse 13 it says for Adam was first formed then Eve and Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So now Paul says <clears throat> that that seed that was promised to Eve would actually bring salvation. She would be saved. The church would be saved through this man child that was to bruise the serpent's head. So, so the 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 seed, the seed itself. <clears throat> could me correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but the seed itself um, was not uh, uh, the birth of a of a um, of a of a special race, or 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 was it? The, it doesn't the, have anything to do at all uh, with with a a a. a uh, a particular uh, ethnic group. Well, the thing is, when we move to the promise of Abraham, we begin to see that God begins to introduce a, a nation, a, nation. a people that would be raised up to do a specific work. Okay. When it comes to Abraham, we begin to see that there is this um, promise that is made to his seed afterwards. But again, when we move from Adam and Eve and we come down uh, to Abraham, we begin to see that this um, promise is again introduced to the world because we know that from Adam down to Noah and then the flood comes. 
Every man's imagination became evil continually. And then we find that God uh, saved Noah and his family. And then as men again began to multiply upon the earth, this same uh, spirit of Cain, as it were, began to depart from the principles of God. And then all of a sudden God raised up Abraham and he called him out from among his idolatrous kinfolk uh, to keep the knowledge of God alive. And God, <clears throat> once again, began to introduce to society this knowledge of Jehovah, this knowledge of, of God, this knowledge of the true and living God. And we find that through him was made a promise to his seed, once again, that seed that would come. And, and we find that in, in Genesis chapter 12. And let's look at that just for clarity. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, we'll look in verse uh, 1. <clears throat> Genesis 12, verse 1, and we'll read down to verse uh, 3. And the Bible says this, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, reading down to verse 3. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So here we find that through Abraham now is introduced a nation that would come out of him. Whereas the nations at this particular time of Abraham's life had become corrupt. They began to follow after uh, the religion of Nimrod. And God separated Abraham so as to keep the knowledge of God alive in the earth. And through his seed, through this nation that God identifies, it would be a blessing to all the families or all the nations of the earth. And so we see that God does promise a particular nation blessings, but the thing that we have to do is we have to follow the storyline all the way down to the end. And that's one of the things that, that people are not doing. They're not following the storyline to the end. They're coming to Abraham and they're saying, yes, see the Jew, and, and they're, they're putting millions, yea, billions of dollars into the Jewish nation. But they did not follow the storyline down to the end. And they will begin to see that it is not the Jewish nation, um, but it is those who accept Christ. Ooh.